Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inkis and I'm from MyJS Electronics and today is going to be our part 2 of progression with our uh, uh, MRJ3 a servo amplifier a project that we're working on today and the next uh, piece of a puzzle for us to uh, get things going is to set up the controller that is going to be controlling our uh, servo amplifier all the sequences and pretty much the positioning and things like that and that uh, guy in here is called the FX3U20SSC-H and I presume a lot of you already have seen this controller uh, used a lot and this specific one is just for the FX3U series PLC so uh, that's the equipment we are going to be using today. So today is mainly is how to get this guy, this guy, to communicating uh, with each other. And we are going to be using an FX configurator for that, which is, by the way, it's free. And I will leave that in the link in the description below from Mitsubishi website, where you can even, it's not just uh, setting up the guy uh, to, for the communications. It is as well to uh, create your a uh, what we call the positioning tables and things like that, but that's what we're going to be checking out today. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. And first thing we're going to quickly go through this uh, this controller in here. Another thing we're going to need to check out uh, uh, we need to get familiar a little bit with buffer memories. And this is this is where the most of the information and most of the process controls and things like that is happening. It is in a buffer memories, and I'm going to run you through a little bit. Hopefully, you guys uh, are going to shortly going to explain it. And hopefully you guys gotta get the gist. If you don't, definitely comment below and I'll do a separate video to get a bit more in detail for it. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we get started, let's quickly run through the actual uh, unit. Uh, as you can see down there, my unit is at the moment showing in here a axis x axis. So yeah, so because my uh, controller is set to zero, so it recognizes that as a uh, uh, zero axis, which is x. Uh, but at the moment, if you look uh, a little bit down on the controller, at the moment it says it's a, a b. So at the moment, the, the setup is not being done properly, which we're going to do in a minute. So uh, when it comes down to a controller in here, there, the plug in here that plugs into the in, uh, uh, FX3U unit, uh, I do believe this, this uh, unit in here, the FX3U20 SCC, SSCH unit is only for the FX3U series PLCs. So this guy in here is for the external IOs. Very rare I've seen people using this because al almost always I've, I've encountered these things and they always uh, use the internal buffers for it, internal memory buffers for it. So, uh, but yeah, there's option for you to have a signaling from external. Uh, uh, right here in the bottom, this guy does need 24 volt supply. Right in the bottom, you do need to have a, a special plug in here. You can plug in 24 volt DC supply in there. I have lost my connector, so I had to improvise and I used two cables with ferrules that I was able to push onto the pins. So. There we go, it'll do for now. So from there on then, this guy in here is a fiber fiber uh, cable down here, which communicates with your servo amplifier down here, and it plugs in there, and one plugs into servo amplifier C and 1A. So that's pretty much there it is, and then from there on, you can see I plugged in another card, and that's for the later on, we're gonna be covering this uh, analog card, how to wire and everything like that as well. So, uh, these units, as they progress, they are classed as uh, actually units and they are marked in a buffer memory under use. So it starts from zero. So our card actually is going to be marked as zero because we're going to be doing a little bit of programming down there. So uh, they, uh, so you more or less uh, to understand where I'm getting this U0 from because this unit in here is the first one in line after the PLC. So it will be classed as U0, U1, U2, blah, 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 all the way to seven. So, uh, so yeah, this is basically how you will be marking up these units. So, uh, yeah, and uh, it's, it's, it's all of this data is stored in the buffer memory, and uh, I'm going to be running you through a more or less step-by-step -step guide how that buffer memory works and how to really interpret and what to do with it. So, uh, yeah, so and that's pretty much uh, when it comes down regarding uh, this uh, controller. I do believe I have not forgot anything. So uh, let me just zoom out a little bit because we're going to be seeing that on the screen a little bit so we can see. We're going to jump on an FX configurator and make, uh, configure this guy so they both can talk with each other properly. Here we are. Guys, I'm going to tell you one thing. I've been uh, debating for a long time how to structure this video so it comes across as more as 
as uh, understandable as possibly it is i'm hoping you guys are keeping up and uh, well on your ways to getting this system working for yourselves so remember fx uh, uh, fx uh, configurator is free of charge i'll leave the link in the description below get it off the uh, mitsubishi website and as i said there's a lot of companies exploiting this charge and up to about 100 quid at least here in uk for it it's just ridiculous so uh, this is the FX configurator. This is the main software pretty much being written just to work with this uh, 20SS um, C card. So uh, from there on you can do quite a bit things in here, especially the, doing your positioning tables, so which you're going to be do going, going, going and covering them step-by-step -step guides in the future videos. So online, first things, uh, we need to create new. As soon as by clicking a new, it's pretty much doing this. Uh, go online and a read from the module so, so the module at the moment now is connected to your plc so it will be uh, communicating via the plc cable so because my plc cable is rs232 port i need to quickly make sure that my com ports as you can see my com port for the rs232 let's quickly jump on a manager and uh double make sure that is the case there you go my antenna is the bridge so make sure that is selected and now it's basically uh, how you connect the plc it will communicate into this card as well so you can see fx3 guy in here from there on you just read from the module what's inside the module and modules already is more or less communicating with the uh, uh with your uh, servo amplifier it just needs a couple of things to understand it properly so once you've done that, here we go. So from there on, there's like monitor mode you can have. And there's quite a bit things to do. I'll let you guys to, to play around. There's, there, there's not that crazy much like usually software have, but this is enough for you to uh, really get your head around it. So from there on, you need to quick uh, go into server parameters in here. Once you go into server parameters, this is this is your server parameters. This is what you really need to set up in here. And I'm going to quickly run you through for your basic setup. The first thing here is because X axis zero is not used. So you, so you can sort of select what's used. So we're going to say this guy in here, the one we've got down there, is going to be our a, a, uh, X axis. And now what unit we're using? This guy, J3 B series unit. So here we go, selecting that one. So yeah, that's done. So uh, then is range of option is not used. Uh, this one in here, do make sure use an incre incremental system. If you download a program from somewhere and uh, this guy is selected to absolute, it will be throwing you all sorts of errors to so make sure that is incremental. That's your encoder down here. And this one as well, this is a crucial one, uh, valid, which needs to be, if it uses the force or stop signal, we are not going to be using that. Again, make sure that is a change to invalid for our option in here so because we are not going to be using the force stop and that very much comes from the external con control so uh everything else in here is pretty much we're going to leave everything for the time being as it is there's not much else we need to change this is a pretty much a standard setup of thing and we can we can always return back to it later on that's pretty much all we really need to do so from there on once you've done that so set up this x-axis and you can actually set up the y-axis if you wish to go online and just write it into your module basically in your servo amplifier module not servo amplifier into module so now module ooh. there we go yes please once you've done that, so all I need to do now is a restart the uh, the system, and uh, I can do that on live camera so you can see what happens. Here we are. As you can see, everything is flashing red. Pretty much is requesting us to reset this whole system. So let's shut it down. There we go, let's restart the system. If all went well, the axis will come on, and as you can see down there on the on the HMI, uh, no, no HMI screen, the, the, the servo, it says a B01, is it B or D? Or D0, no, D01 is pretty much in, in a ready mode, and if I'm not sure you can hear, the servo has come on as well by the, oh, by the default, so you can't. I can't turn them on. So your system is pretty much 
ready to go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we set up this uh, unit to run a uh, B series, uh, MRJ3 B series uh, servo, uh, servo amplifiers. So this uh, this system is pretty much is ready to go. And uh, in the next video, we're going to be start looking into how to uh, how the buffer memories works and how to pretty much start pretty much get this thing working. So well, what, another thing we're going to quickly jump on is to jump back to the computer and uh, I'll show a couple of functions. Here we are, so we are back. So uh, with this software, there's a, you can do quite a bit more if you want to. So uh, let's take this one. Uh, you can just see it on here, it's, it's like a test button in here. Let me just click back on it. So test button, uh, test turn off. So let's let's go into the test mode. So you can do some, some of the test mode, what MR configurator can do. So you can do some of the testing in here as well. So you can see these hammers in here. Uh, just click where on X axis and you can do all sorts of things in here. And so let's go quickly on to the jog mode. And you can set up speed and things like that, how you want it. And then you just, as you can see, it will jog it for you. And things like that, as you can say, the present addresses and things like that. They do check it out, guys. So this software is, again, it's free. You don't have, it's really unlike an MR configurator. With this one, you can uh, do all, uh, all the most uh, most of the testing in this uh, in this uh, software as well. So that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this video. Uh, we have now set up the servo uh, draw, uh, servo amplifier ready to go. In the next video, we're going to start looking a bit more into a uh, programming. And then we're going to be doing a couple of uh, programming first and do the first test, and then we're going to jump into all sorts of different types of a uh, uh, positionings that are available one by one in as uh, consequent videos so on that ladies and gentlemen if you like this video and this help you out do let me know and uh, and uh, do uh, like the video if you like that if you like the video I'm all over the place so yeah uh, if you like the video please smash that like if you don't smash this like comment below any questions anything you would like to know do let me know in this in the comments below I will leave all the necessary manuals and any related videos in the description below so do check it out on that ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.